just a feeling. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man. 923 bug. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today. 923 bugs. Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Perfita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me. It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just got to know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just got to know the right people. You can know the right people too. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Welcome to a brand new format of the Clarence Bug Show. We uh, have, if you're just tuning in, first of all, shame on you where you've been all morning. Y'all talking about shame on me, Clarence, where you been? <laughs> well, we've got a new format now. Uh, the Exiles, our friends Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher, will now precede yours truly. Uh, their show had prior aired on Tuesdays and Thursdays, yours truly Monday and Wednesday. And for the sake of continuity, uh, we thought about it, talked about it, and said, look, why don't we just do an hour each, and then we'll do it five days a week. That way, uh, there's more continuity to it. Uh, it's easier to sell to advertisers, easier for you to remember. And uh, we think that just all the way around, uh, it ends up being a better fit. So, 10 to 11, Monday through Friday, The Exiles, Bill Profita, Kevin Gallagher. Yours truly, 11 to 12, Monday through Friday. Uh, and actually, in the long run, it gives us the opportunity to spend more time with you and yours, and uh, we are always eternally grateful uh, in that regard. Uh, Marty, we got him back in the studio with us. Fortunately, uh, no connect on that just yet, Marty. Yeah, no connection just yet. Okay, we um, are, are juggling some things as you might imagine uh, with so much going on. First and foremost, uh, we want to send our condolences out to Alice Foster and the entire Foster family. Um, Governor Mike Foster passing this weekend. And you know, uh, I, I, reminiscing with some folks about this. I was trying to remember in recent memory a governor that epitomized true Louisiana more than Mike Foster. And to be honest with you, I couldn't come up with one. I mean, you know, we, we all understand when it comes to public service, elected officials, quote unquote, they're typically is a, and, and this is not in, in a derogatory sense at all, it, it simply is what it is. There is typically a slickness, a polished um, persona, if you will. Mike Foster, my opinion only, epitomized the true Louisiana spirit. Uh, we often call ourselves 
either the Bayou State or the Sportsman's Paradise. And in both of those instances, Mike Foster was one of those guys that just looking at him, talking with him, he's the kind of Louisianian that was maybe more at home sitting on his tractor than he was at the mansion or at the Capitol sitting behind the desk. He was the kind of individual that was more comfortable in a duck blind um, than he was schmoozing with members of the legislature. He was more comfortable on a motorcycle or in an F-250 as opposed to a BMW or a Cadillac. That's, that's just the kind of guy that he was. And he will sorely, sorely be missed. And you know, at the end of the day, politics aside, political party affiliation aside, what most of us want when we elect a chief executive officer of our state, first and foremost, we want someone who loves Louisiana. We want someone who epitomizes Louisiana. And certainly, Mike Foster uh, fit the bill in all of the aforementioned categories. It is um, a sad day. And for those of you that didn't know of his passing, if and when you see the flags flying at half staff, then you will know that that's why. Uh, Marty, no connect still? Okay, okay, un understand. We uh, will reschedule um, Carmen Million for later. She has a family emergency that she has to deal with. One of the things, speaking of people's passing, one of the things we had planned to talk with Carmen Million about was the passing of Jim Stalls. Uh, you may well remember the name Jim Stalls uh, for his long time leadership of the Better Business Bureau of South Central Louisiana. Jim, if memory serves correct, came to us, uh, I want to say from Memphis where he was the Better Business Bureau president for three years. Prior to that, uh, brain freeze. He spent 17 years in another city before coming here to Baton Rouge. He was one of those people that no matter who you were, no matter what your station in life happened to be, he made you feel comfortable. I uh, had the pleasure and the privilege of hosting the Better Business Bureau's very prestigious Torch Awards ceremony for ethics in business a couple of years ago. As a matter of fact, it was the final year that Jim Stalls uh, was president of the BBB, and it was the transition period, the, pardon the pun, the double entendre, the passing of the torch for the Torch Awards that year. Uh, and that is where Carmen Million and I really became intimately familiar with one another, and I'm so grateful that we have carried that particular relationship further now that she is the president of that prestigious organization. But Jim Stalls, like Carmen Million, and so many others involved with the Better Business Bureau of Baton Rouge, you find that serving the community is something that once it gets in your blood, it's really, really, really hard, almost impossible to get it out of your system. We certainly send our deepest and heartfelt condolences out to the Stalls family. And while we're doing it, we may as well include Smokey Bourgeois, uh, in that as well. If you were with us for the exiles, I related the story. Uh, for those of you that don't know or maybe had forgotten, he was the founder and owner of George's uh, Restaurant. And <laughs> funny story, 
Uh, and, and, and I don't know how this happened. It, it, it just is what it is. For as long as I can remember, I've always eaten my steak medium rare. But for whatever reason, hamburgers I wanted well done. I, I, I don't know why, don't ask me. There's no rhyme nor reason to it. But another late and dear friend, attorney and CPA Ben Melanson, uh, took me out to lunch once and we went to George's. And uh, he said, man, you gotta, you gotta get a burger. They have the best burgers within miles. So sure enough, I order one and the server asks, how do you want it cooked? And I'm like, um, on a bun? <laughs> she says, no, you want it rare, medium rare, medium well, well, uh, how do you want it? I said, well, I guess well done. She put her hands on her hips and said, no. I said, excuse me? She said, no. I'm not going to have the cook butcher this amazing ground beef that we have, cooking all of the flavor and the juices out of it by cooking it well done. You'll take medium rare. I said, yes, ma'am, I guess I will. <laughs> and ever since then, arguably the best hamburger I've ever had in my life. And you know, un until you learn certain culinary secrets, and, and really there, there there's, shouldn't be any excuse there. Um, Marty, did you just raise that volume or was that out in the truck? On, on the PA, must have been out in the truck just now. Um, my mother, late mom, God bless her, was as Creole as the day is long. Uh, so she could cook. Hazel Fontenot bugs could burn. I mean, she spent her entire life in school food service as, as head dietitian at Cheneyville High, which was then Cheneyville, now Northeast High, uh, Scott Street Elementary, Park Elementary. When she retired from the school food service, she then took over the culinary department at our church. And, and being a Creole girl, you know, she, there's no excuse for me all those years eating a hamburger well done. But it took one trip to George's to change all of that forever. It, it just goes to show you, you never know as we traverse our way through this journey that we call life, when those little life-changing moments will occur. You never know. And, and many times it happens in the most unlikely of places. Uh, for those of you that frequent Georgia's, you know, when you walk in, if you don't know George's. When you walk in, it's like the white people's equivalent of a hole in the wall. Okay, brothers, black folk, we call, we got we got holes in the wall, a little out of the way place. I don't know if white people have a hole in the wall spot or not. George's, when you walk through, looks like it, and it has that same feel because the staff there knows everybody by name. Service, absolutely, second to none. It is truly a gem. And uh, I can only hope that with Smokey's passing, that aside from his passion for public service, are the things that we will continue to remember him by for years to come. We need to get our first break. I almost said it, Marty, I almost said of hour one. First break of today's show. We'll bang this out, come back, and we get ahead to, now that's just stupid, coming up next on the Clarence Bug Show. Stay close. I owe the 
IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax Tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9. Happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6. And brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2 as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Welcome back as we head into segment two of today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Again, we have changed the format now. Uh, previously, we were on for two hours, Monday and Wednesday. The Exiles, Bill Profita, Kevin Gallagher, on two hours, Tuesday and Thursday. For the sake of continuity and ease of selling both products, we said, wait a minute, why don't we just do an hour apiece but do it every day, five days a week. So, starting today, the exiles were on from 10 to 11, yours truly on 11 to 12, and of course that means I'll be back tomorrow and the day after and the day after and the day after. So, appointment viewing just became a whole lot easier. All right, segment two, it's Monday, time for da 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 now that's just stupid. We start in Berkeley, California. Beginning March 21st of 2021, cookies, candy, chips, and cans of soda will no longer be allowed to be displayed near cash registers. These, quote, unapproved items are now banned from the checkout line. And <laughs> the reasoning behind this is COVID-19. You heard me right. First of all, well, let me, let me read you the statement from the vice mayor, Sophie Hahn. The policy is necessary because the pandemic has proved 
that people with underlying conditions like diabetes are more susceptible to COVID-19. Now, first of all, if a person goes into a store, has a hankering, yeah, I said hankering. Clarence, black people don't say hankering. Yes, we do. If you go in the store and you got a hankering for a bag of chips and a cold drink, just because it's not next to the register does not mean I'm not going to buy it. All it means is I will walk however many steps to the chip and the cold drink aisle, and I'm going to buy what I want. If I want the family size Chips Ahoy or Double Stuff Oreos, just because they're not in the checkout line, all that means is I'm gonna walk my little happy behind to the aisle where they are selling them. But another example of we're just one more regulation away from Nirvana, really? And if that is the case, why wait until March of 2021? If you're so concerned, oh, people are dying, we're killing people by having Oreos near the checkout counter. If that's the case, why wait until 2021? Go ahead, do it now and people will get a little more healthy between now and 2021 because they're going to have to walk the extra length to go to the aisle where the cookies and the chips are located. At the end of the day, y'all, <laughs> that's just stupid. Number two, appeals court in Minneapolis, Minnesota, ruling last week that a school district there cannot bar students who claim to identify as the opposite sex from using bathrooms and locker rooms consistent with their gender identity. This is in relationship to a lawsuit that was filed. A transgender girl who identifies as a boy, tried out for the swim team, made the swim team. So the coach said, all right, you use the female locker room to dress, and the boys will use the boys' locker room to dress. Uh-uh, that's discriminatory. You, you, you're discriminating. My child identifies as a boy even though biologically it's a girl. Obviously, they didn't think this thing all the way through because here eventually is what's gonna happen. What happens when this girl who identifies as a boy decides I wanna wear what the boys wear. I don't want to wear the one piece that the girls wear. You're discriminating. I identify as a boy. I should be able to wear just the brief that the boys wear to swim. What happens then? If you mandate that she covers her breast by wearing a one piece, that's discriminatory. You allow her to dress in the boys, or in, in the girls' locker room because, really? Now that's just stupid. That's just stupid. And it's not gonna be long before a lawsuit's gonna be filed in that regard. I identify as a boy, so I should be allowed to dress where the boys dress. and. I should be able to dress like the boys dress. You follow me? <sighs> Just when you thought 
we couldn't get any more stupid. I can't wait till we get the graphic for this segment because stupid will be spelled S-T-O-O-P-I-D. That's like S-T-U-P-I-D to the next level. We are losing our collective minds in this country. And you know, it's one thing for people to think this way. It is what it is. You, you've heard me say God knows how many times over the years. It's America. You got a right to be a moron. It's written somewhere in the Constitution. There's some fine print either in the Bill of Rights or they snuck an amendment to the Constitution in there that says this is America. You got a right to be a moron. It's one thing for people to think this way. But when the courts render decisions to validate it, now, Houston, we got a problem. It won't be long. Trust me, it won't be long. I have filed the lawsuit. You have mandated, even though biologically I'm a female, I identify as male, so you're now forcing the school district to let me dress with the males. It will not be long before somebody is going to sue. If I can dress with the boys, I should be able to dress like a boy. I fear for the soul of my country. Some of these things would really be comical if they weren't so sad. Now, maybe, you see why it's so important that when you go in that little booth and you're all alone and you are exercising that very precious constitutional right Maybe now you see why it's important that you make an informed decision. Bottom of the hour break. We're going to bang this one out. We'll come back and continue on with the Monday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Here and only here on the Pelican. Stay close. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Jaguar Nation, we need your help in masking up Louisiana. Masking up or slow the spread of COVID-19. During this time, we must continue to wear a mask. Wash your hands and practice social distancing. It's important that we continue to abide by the CDC's guidelines to stop the spread. Jaguar Nation, we challenge you to mask up. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. 
We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUGS. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me. It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just got to know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just got to know the right people. You can know the right people too. Welcome back to the Monday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. We, um, because of time constraints, obviously, the show ends at 12 noon. Uh, but want to give you guys and girls a heads up. There is a 12 noon press conference scheduled uh, regarding the next Bayou Classic. Uh, as I'm sure you're well aware, all HBCU and Louisiana football fans uh, know that there had been uh, some conversations regarding whether or not New Orleans would be able to host the Bayou Classic this year, due in large part to the severity of COVID-19 and its impact on the Crescent City. Uh, today, at 12 noon, there is an announcement scheduled. Uh, there had been in these, quote, conversations, uh, and many cases, rumors passed about that uh, Shreveport's Independence Stadium was being considered. Uh, Tiger Stadium was in the mix as well. Uh, hopefully, this press conference at 12 noon uh, will give us all some clarity as far as where the location will be for the next Bayou Classic. Also, speaking of sports in the sports arena, um, the fall off, decline, whatever term you want to use for TV ratings for the NBA and the finals continues and it is picking up steam. Game one of the finals uh, was down about 27 percent from a year ago. Sunday's game two, viewership down just over 40 percent. Now, you will hear any number of pundits come up with any number of reasons as to why this is. You will hear, well, people are cutting the cord these days. You will hear well, people had to cancel cable, although this was on broadcast TV. Uh, because of COVID-19, they aren't working, so on and so forth. I don't care how you try to spin this. It is disastrous for the NBA, and it's very telling on behalf of the American sports viewing public. You cannot insult, alienate half of your viewing audience and expect them to continue to support you. In the ratings recently, average viewership was less than four million people. Out of a population of 330 plus million, people now 
are voting with their remotes. People now are sending a message that we come to sports to get away from the cares of the day. If we want to be preached to, we go to church. If we want political statements, well, we've got news networks for all of that. We tune in to sports for an escape, to get away. We tune in to sports because that's the one time where black and white doesn't matter. What matters is the color of the uniform. Under the helmet, inside the jersey, doesn't matter. You're playing for my favorite team. And I gotta make one little addendum. I guess the only time black and white would matter would be if you are a San Antonio Spurs fan because their colors are black and white. But you get my point. That's the one bastion where we don't care about black and white. We care about the team colors. If you are a Kansas City Chiefs fan, red, white, and yellow, that's your thing. If you are a Detroit Lions fan, that powder blue and silver, that's your thing. You don't care about black or white. And you don't want that infiltrating, much less being preached to you from a holier-than-thou perspective or attitude. Fortunately for them, the NBA, they have a nearly billion dollar TV contract. And I read something interesting just last night after the ratings came out. Many people are of the opinion that with Americans tuning out in droves, it's just a matter of time before advertisers will realize, well, the price that we pay to buy advertising doesn't really justify the return on investment. I saw a post that said that is true. However, with a billion dollar TV contract, you can weather the storm to a degree. But then something was posted that really caught my eye. And it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. The NBA is looking to develop the China market. The NBA is phenomenally popular in China. Maybe, well, obviously, today, more so than in the United States of America. Think back. Recently, where did they ship all the players over to play? Think back. How many contracts have endorsement deals with Nike and the like who run all of these manufacturing slash sweatshops in China. So for many of them, losing the American market will not hurt nearly as bad because with China's population and the popularity of the game there being what it is, you will make that back and more. But at the end of the day, do you really want to go that route? Because let's be brutally honest about this. When folks stop watching here, when they stop buying season tickets here, when they stop buying jerseys, caps, jackets, pennants, the whole nine, 
at some point, your loyalties will seriously come into question. And at the end of the day, <laughs> you could very easily say, well, Clarence, maybe 10 years from now, they might be just playing basketball in China. Well, that's always a possibility. However, I would think twice about that if you were a person that looks like me, because you realize how black folk were treated in China when coronavirus first took off, right? Just saying, just saying. And it's so easy, so very easy to stand for what's right. It's so very easy to stand for the country that made it possible for you with no skills other than you can catch a ball or toss a ball better than other people and make untold millions of dollars. I guess the founding fathers in their wisdom, however, had it right. The power, particularly in a situation like ours, under capitalism, the power resides with the individual. And at the end of the day, yes, you have the right to protest at the game in whatever form or fashion you choose to. But those of us watching have the right to protest with the remote by not watching. Just saying. Just saying. Tell you what, we are heading into our final segment. Marty, was that for me? Uh, can we? Sl okay, all right. Well, tell you what, let's go ahead, get this break out of the way. We'll bang this puppy out, be done with it, come back, and we're going to spend some time with Attorney Franz Borkart talking about something that has uh, some people concerned. Could a state, if you refuse to take the COVID-19 vaccine, could they fine you? Could they put you in jail? We'll talk about it after this break on the Clarence Bug Show. Stay close. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling Hi, business owners. Phase three. Woohoo! But do your customers know you're back? Well, that's where the Clarence Bug Show and Pelican Broadcasting can help. Right now, we've got great rates on advertising packages to help you get the word out. Shoot me an email at bugsclarence at gmail.com. Or better yet, call me up. I'd love to talk with you. 225 485 6839. Let's get together and make phase three the best it can possibly be. Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Profita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. 
From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Welcome back to the final segment of today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. I, I mentioned to you earlier today and at the end of, of the middle of the Exiles show that um, some folks are worried that once the vaccine for COVID-19 is produced, whether or not states would have the authority to either fine or possibly jail individuals that refuse to take the vaccine. Attorney Franz Borghardt, dear friend of the show from our radio days uh, and the TV days, joins us to talk about this. Franz, good morning, and how are you, my friend? Good morning, Mr. Boggs. How are you, sir? I am well. So are you familiar with this 1905, quote, precedent that allows states to compel vaccinations in more or less intrusive ways? Sure. And it's, it's still, quote, unquote, good law. Mm -hmm. um, although it hasn't really been tested strenuously, and we certainly have a new court that's far different in its makeup uh, than back then. But essentially, long story made short, the government, local, state, federal, has what's called policing authority to restrict activity based on public, public health concerns. Mm -hmm. um, we've already seen that to a certain degree. So... The same logic gets applied to vaccinations. Now, the difference is wearing a mask is different than the invasiveness of being injected with a vaccine. Right. But that all being said, I think the way you're going to see this rear its head is you will have ordinances that, that penalize from a criminal or civil standpoint a citizen not doing a vaccination. Mm -hmm. You'll have laws created that restrict activity based on failure to get um, the vaccinations, and we see that already in schools. Right. Um, you have the right not to get a vaccination for your child. However, you may have the consequence of your child not being able to attend school as a result of it. In, um, so, in 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 this country, Franz, traditionally, as you mentioned, we equate vaccinations with children, but in the case right. of COVID nineteen, we're talking potentially about the entire population. Does that change the dynamic any here? So, so from a private business standpoint, no. I mean, businesses, and I, and I want to draw that distinction, Clarence, because a business always can say, if you don't have something or you don't do something, you can't come in, mm -hmm. right? Right. But the government, on the other hand, when we're talking about the people as a whole, First, how does the person pay for the medicine? How do they pay for the vaccination? And we're assuming that this is going to be something that's affordable, right? Right. Um, secondly, how are you going to mandate it? And then thirdly, how are you going to track it? Mm -hmm. Are we going to have chips on us that they scan to see whether or not we have the vaccination? Right. Is there going to be a vaccination card? I mean, I don't know the answer to that. Right. I can tell you that traditionally the Supreme Court, when it comes to drawing blood, or injecting, mm -hmm. they they acknowledge that that is invasive. Right. They they have said before this is invasive. However, however, what they've also said, going all the way back to the early 1900s, is the government can make you do that because the the good of the many, so to speak, outweighs the good of the the one or, or outliers to say I don't want you to do this. Right. So at the end of the journey of of all of this. The Supreme Court in 2012 ruled that Congress could not use its powers 
to regulate interstate commerce to compel people to buy insurance. Now, looking at the makeup of the court and how it could potentially change, um, more so leaning harder to the right, particularly with the addition of Amy Coney Barrett, uh, would all of that then become a moot point or, or would we ultimately end up with a patchwork of different laws varying from state to state? So remember, for the Supreme Court to step in, it has to end up, the case has to end up at their doorstep. Right. So a government would have to make a law, a person or a group of people would have to challenge the law, and then it would have to play itself all the way up the system. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So theoretically, a new Supreme Court justice could change the dynamic and the decision-making process of the group if, if you can really predict how she is going to vote and, and I'll tell you, Clarence, we've had surprises from Justice Roberts. <laughs> you think? We've had some, yeah. I mean, so, so I always tell people, yeah, past behavior is an indicative, is indicative of, of, of forecasting future. However, However. They, are on the, they are on the Supreme Court. Nobody can call them into question. And if they have a, a, a ideological change in their worldview, guess what? we got to deal with it. Yeah. So... In the case of, let's say for the sake of this conversation, we end up with a patchwork. One state says we will fine you, another state says we will imprison you, another state says, well, if you don't want it, you don't have to take it. Will the court step in and try to bring some degree of commonality there or are we looking again at the fact that we are still a representative republic and there are certain things where states still enjoy sovereignty? So your, your question, I don't know that we have enough time to answer it thoroughly because <laughs> it's, it's complicated. Okay. So the states technically, the states technically and the local municipalities are, are the gatekeepers of this. Right. Can the federal government make a law that were, would mandate something? Sure they can. But mm -hmm. I think you're going to have an end of it. There's 50 different states with 50 different ways of doing things. Some will align. Some will disalign. Some will make it a civil penalty and a fine. Some will make it a criminal penalty. And I don't know that I don't know until you get to a unifying court. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean a court that can make a decision that affects everybody, which right. would be the Supreme Court. Right. I don't know that you're going to have a unified way of doing stuff. So, you know, so, so, so does that then open the door for the court to say the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few? Sure. Sure. That would be consistent with the public health provisions of the Constitution and the policing authority of the Constitution, mm -hmm. which is delegated to the states. Wow. Interesting. My gut tells me and Franz, as you well know, I've learned uh, over the years, and I'm sure you will testify to the truthfulness of this as well. After a certain amount of time and certain experiences, you learn to trust your gut. My gut tells me right. we have in no way, shape, or form heard the last of this, my friend. No. And, I, and in fact, I think that, well, first we've got to get a vaccination. Right. And the vaccine will be challenged, by the way, a anti-vaxxer is going to challenge the, the vaccine on, has it been thoroughly vetted? Yep. Has there been sufficient testing? Yep. There will be legal challenges that happen well before a mandate. Yeah. Um, so, so because they're just like people don't want to have to wear masks, people don't want to have to get injected, and they're going to fight it. Yep. So, Attorney Franz Borghardt. Good stuff as always. Great to hear your voice, my friend. And we'll be checking back in with you to draw up on your expertise as all of this continues to unfold. Franz, thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buck. Have a good one. Have a good one as well. It's uh, a conversation that, who, if you think we have had some, um, what's the word I'm looking for, contentious debates in this country in recent memory, all you got to do is look at Marty, who's sitting in here right now like this. If you think, and, and I'm reading his mind, right? If you think I'm going to let somebody 
mandate. Y'all may as well go ahead on and clear out a cell now and get ready, because ain't happening, Hulse. Ain't happening. And, and with today's political climate being what it is, <laughs> now, you would almost automatically say, yeah, but now, you know, when's the last time we put somebody in jail because they, you know, refused the vaccine? Well, I can't think of a time in this country in recent memory. Uh, I, I mentioned 2019, the measles outbreak in New York and the Hasidic Jew community. They, um, they were adamantly against that and they were fined if they didn't get the measles vaccine because the outbreak was just spreading like wildfire. But now you get outside this country, in France, they jail people. They will put you in jail. And with all the fear, with all the hysteria, with all the mis and disinformation out there regarding COVID-19, don't be surprised if and when the vaccine is finally ready for distribution that someone out there in government, and, and we have watched this unfold and gather more momentum and more momentum and more momentum as the years have gone by. Don't be surprised if someone in government who thinks they know better than you what is best for you decides if you don't do it, then we ought to be able to lock you up. Just saying. After all, folks in Berkeley just decided, and I told you, and that's just stupid in that segment, you can't sell chips and cookies and soda in the checkout line because COVID-19 has shown us people have pre-existing conditions. We shouldn't be allowed, stores shouldn't be allowed to exacerbate that. Never mind that they're going to walk down the aisle and get the cookies and the chips and the soda anyway. But there's always somebody that thinks they know better than you what's best for you. That's why today more than ever you hear me say, you know what, you're right. America, we're not perfect, but doggone it for my money, it's the best there is. And God knows there is no place else on his green earth that I'd rather be. Speaking of the good Lord, you realize he loves you, right? And I hope you know that I do too. But at the end of the day, <laughs> there ain't a doggone thing you can do about either one. Take care of yourselves. Let's take care of each other. And the good news, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Yeah.